Hey, there's probably nothing more lonely than being in a one-sided marriage where it feels like you're the only one trying, you're the only one who cares, you're the only one who put in any effort into the relationship, and maybe you even ask your spouse if they'd go to counseling with you, if they'd take a workshop, do a conference, and they simply are unwilling to do any work towards the marriage. If that's you, you probably feel like giving up, but don't give up because there is so much that you can actually do for your marriage to strengthen and improve it even if you're the only one willing to put in any effort. What I wanna do in this video is give you four thoughts on what you can do even if your spouse is not willing to work on the marriage. That's today on Relation Shots. Hey, welcome to Relation Shots, the place to get practical relationship advice that actually works in your relationship. If you want a free guide to intimacy, you'll see a link in the description area below. If you like the content here, go ahead and like and subscribe. So if you're in a relationship where maybe you've become hopeless, maybe you're frustrated, disappointed, that what you thought would be a relationship where you're both working on it together is not actually the case, and you're the only one who's willing to do it, you're the only one who's even willing to watch a video like this, don't give up, I've got four quick thoughts on what you can do. One, so you feel like you're making progress in the relationship, and two, because this will actually make an impact and strengthen your relationship, and hopefully, at some point, your spouse will see what's going on and wanna join you in the journey. So I think number one is just acknowledge you're not in control of your spouse. Yeah, this may be the most difficult part of the process, but there's nothing more frustrating than putting effort into an area where you're gonna get no return. You can't control them. Now, what you may be able to do is try to manipulate, try to punish, try to withdraw, try to do things to influence them, but ultimately, you cannot control whether or not another person will make any effort, will do the things you want them to do, will interact in the relationship and try to strengthen it. You're simply not in control of it. And the quicker you realize that, and the quicker you give up the desire and need for control, the better you'll be able to focus your energy on where it should be focused in the relationship. Otherwise, trying to control the other person is only gonna keep you in a place where you're focusing on the wrong things, you're spending energy on things that are not gonna get you any kind of return on investment and simply are a waste of time. And usually what happens is it causes frustration for the other person too and pushes them away or makes them even less likely to do what they feel like you're trying to control them to do in the relationship. So listen, if you're a person who loves justice, who loves rightness, this will be tough for you because yes, guess what? It's not fair. And yes, guess what? It does suck that your spouse does not wanna work on a relationship but you are not in control of them and you need to realize that the quicker you do, the quicker you'll be able to move on and do some things that are actually effective in the relationship, which leads me to thought number two, which is work on yourself. Here's the good news. You are completely in control of yourself, whether you wanna do stuff, whether you don't wanna do stuff, whether you wanna improve, whether you don't wanna improve. So any work you're willing to do on yourself will improve you, which ultimately will improve the relationship. And we all have work to do. I don't care how great you are, how healthy you are, how much you feel like you got a handle on relationships. There's probably some stuff that you need to work on. There's probably some areas of your life where maybe you need healing or growth. There's probably some areas relationally that you need growth and communication and conflict re resolution and being assertive or maybe not being too much in setting specific things, staying on the issue. There's probably a ton of things that you can actually work on in your relationship that will help you get to the place where you can, uh, you can now help your spouse come alongside of you in it. So you may need better community, you may need better support, you may need better tools, and guess what? We created a marriage membership for you. That's what it's for, people who wanna strengthen their relationship, whether or not their spouse gets in there. You may need other good men or other good women to support you and encourage you, and our membership community is that place. We have tons of spouses in there who are there by themselves, their spouse isn't willing to be there, but they're finding support, they're finding community, and they're finding resources that are helping them grow personally and grow relationally. So number two is do what you can do. Work on yourself, and the good news is, whatever you work on, nobody can ever take from you. And not only will it help you in your marriage, but it will likely help you in every other relationship that you ever have. Number three is set boundaries. 
there are probably some areas in the relationship where you are trying to take responsibility for either actions, attitudes, behaviors of your spouse that are not your responsibility. Oftentimes our problem in a relationship is because we have not set healthy boundaries that determine what I'm responsible for and what you're responsible for in the relationship. If you need some ideas on boundaries, you can check out my video on boundaries. But the idea is simply you need to set boundaries that create a space where you can remain healthy so you're not getting bitter, you're not getting resentful, you're not getting emotionally worn, worn down. And instead of trying to take responsibility for them, instead of trying to force them to do some of the things you want them to do, you just need to set good boundaries. If they have an anger issue that they're not actively working on, you do not owe them to take responsibility for that and try to make sure everything's perfect, walk around on eggshells. Setting a healthy boundary means if they're going to come home with an anger issue, you set a boundary. I'm not going to interact with you. Or I'm going to take the kids and go to my mom's house. Or if I don't have kids, I'm going to leave the house for a period of time until you calm down because I'm not going to sit here dealing with your anger issues that you're not dealing with, whatever it may be. If it's an addiction, if it's a bad habit, if it's a behavior that's not healthy for the relationship, you may need to set healthy boundaries, which will allow you to stay in a place healthy emotionally so that you can continue to work on you and work in the relationship. And it prevents you from putting a lot of energy into something that is not your responsibility at all in the first place. So I would encourage you, evaluate your boundaries. Do you need to set some boundaries where you have not yet? And oftentimes when we set boundaries, guess what? The other person is forced to now take responsibility for their behaviors, attitudes, for their actions, which may cause them to now make the choice to grow personally if they want to kind of have the relationship they want. Because too many times our spouse is not forced to take responsibility for their own stuff and so they won't grow. You know what? If, if you're not acting like a husband or acting like a wife in doing the things that are healthy for our relationship, then you probably should not get husband or wife access and assets that I'm giving you. I'm not going to continue, and this is not punitive, but I'm not going to continue to do the things that I would do for a spouse who is engaged and invested in the relationship if you're choosing not to be. And that's setting a healthy boundary to say, you know what, I'm willing to do these things, but it also requires you doing your part. If you're not willing to, then I'm not going to do these things over there. That can be a healthy boundary. Again, it's not punitive. It's setting a healthy boundary so that you can guard your own emotionality. So the fourth thing is be intentional in the marriage. Yes, there's little things you can do being intentional that will improve the marriage even if the other person is unwilling to do them, which you say, well, at some point if they're not reciprocating, that's not fair, it's one-sided, and I'm back to the same place. Listen, if you've already been working on yourself, if you're actually not trying to control them, if you're setting healthy boundaries, you're probably not gonna overdo it in this area in an unhealthy way. You can plan a date night because you know that's helpful for the relationship. Well, it's not fair because I always have to do it. Okay, so you can either have no date nights or you can put in a little bit of effort and plan a date night because that will increase connection. You can also ask, hey, would you like to plan it next time? But you can put in some effort. You can make the decision every day to get up and, and be grateful and appreciate them. Um, or express and celebrate things that they do. Admire them. You, you can give them some of the things that you know they desire in their relationship, even if they're not reciprocating, because again, you're coming from a healthier place. You're working on self, you're setting healthy boundaries, so you're not doing this out of an emptiness, you're doing this out of an overflow, and you're not doing it to such an unhealthy, lopsided uh, way that, that you now are becoming bitter and resentful in the relationship, but you can continue to invest in the relationship, and the hope is at some, time, some point your modeling will now invite your spouse in to participate and do some of those things as well. So if that's you and you're in a relationship where you feel like it's one-sided, I would suggest you consider these four thoughts and ideas on how you can take care of yourself, but also be working on the relationship and ultimately improve your experience in the relationship. And hopefully at some point your spouse will be drawn into doing that as well. As I mentioned before, guess what you're going to need? You're going to need support to do this because it is one-sided and you do get tired, which is why we have a membership community. And again, I'm gonna beat, beat this nail <laughs> until it's all the way driven in. I believe that relationships are a group project, you need community, and if you're in a one-sided marriage, you absolutely need community. 
And we've got spaces for husbands and spaces for wives in our community where the wives can talk and the husbands can talk. We have Zoom calls for the wives, Zoom calls for the husbands, and Zoom calls for couples. We have support for you, whether your spouse is willing to work on the relationship or not, you can find tools, you can find support, and you can find community to help you turn your relationship around. I'd love to hear your thoughts on these four ideas or maybe any ideas you have that have worked or not worked so we can have a discussion around this. If there's anything we can do to support you in your marriage, we'd love to be part of your marriage journey. And until next time, I'll see you right back here on Relationships.